Welcome aboard United's 777 200. One of the things you probably already know is that United was one of the inaugural customers for the 777. Now, the first 777 flight actually took flight uh, 27 of um, June 7th of 1995. Now this is... Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. I'm right over there, I'll be right back. Oh, I'm good. So I want to give you a cabin tour, give you an idea of the best seats, the worst seats. Now this is the more dense first class seating. It's two by four by two. Now you'll see uh, one faces backwards, two faces forwards, three faces backwards. Now all um, now in the center, you, uh, four faces forwards. Now we'll go through the centers in just a moment. Um, I'm gonna walk right back through here, give you an idea of the rest of the cabin. I'm sorry, uh, I'm actually right sorry, Just give him a moment, please. Okay. Go right back here. So you can see there's a lab right back here behind row four. Again, uh, row four is forwards. And row three is forwards in the center. Now in many ways, these seats, uh, row three on the BA side is backwards. Row two is forwards. In the center, you'll find that row two, uh, the GFDD, is backwards, and row one is forward. Um, now, these all have monitors. This is a relatively older configuration. It's used primarily for leisure and so forth. Um, and you'll see it's... Um, it's actually not as uh, modern or popular as, say, the new Polaris product. But look, for a Transcon or a trip to Hawaii, uh, I'm going to say it's amazing. Um, these all do have full screens. Uh, we'll actually go over to our seat in just a moment here. Now, if you're asking me for seating recommendations, I would generally say anything other than... Um, 4 AB and uh, 4 LK due to proximity to the lab. I actually don't mind. Uh, we are. Um, I don't mind uh, the fact that we have um, backward seats. I, actually, once you're flying, it's really not noticeable anyway. Um, the other thing I'd share, and I'm going to show you the seat detail in just a moment here. Um, and you see, I don't think the uh, systems are on, but this is oh, yeah. in fact, these seats are in fact full lie flat, uh, which is pretty fun. Uh, it's not the full Polaris product, so it is a little bit uh, more compact, but really uh, for a Transcon, for a flight to Hawaii, I think it's something you'd enjoy a lot. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, there is, as I said, a nice TV in unit. I don't believe it has access to the air traffic control, but correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, a couple other interesting things. This is a product only offered in the 777-200, uh, which is primarily, again, used for the tourist markets, Hawaii, Transcons, and so forth. United was the inaugural customer for the 777, and um, it took del delivery uh, June 7th of 1995. Now, the interesting thing about the development of the 777 is the fact that this was a plane that was developed when uh, the United States relaxed its ET ETOPS regulations um, and allowed dual engine planes, uh, longer uh, diversion uh, over diversion airport distances uh, when going over water. This was largely due to the improvement in engine technology and, um, and the like. Now, at the same time you look, uh, running a four-engine plane versus two is more efficient. So to this date, uh, the 777 is the largest 
twin engine uh, aircraft and it is still used uh, widely by many airlines. Uh, it is the largest, it is larger than the 787, but when, when this plane was actually um, launched, it was to be placed between the 747, which at the time was the long range airplane of choice, and um, the smaller 767. Now the other interesting thing about the 777, it was largely replacing the aging DC-10, uh, as well as the uh, McDonnell Douglas L-1011, uh, which were obviously competitors of Boeing, but were gaps in the market, and um, you know it's been largely very well received. Uh, the pressurization and so forth, not all the way up to Dreamliner, but it certainly is a lot more new technology and things of that variety. Um, you have nice overhead bins. You'll notice, I don't think there is a crew rest quarter up here. If you look on a Dreamliner, you'll often find it right up in here and you won't find luggage bins. But in this instance, you have plenty of luggage if you are in first. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll look forward to sharing more uh, as we go in flight. I'm trying to see if we can get the TVs going, but I don't see that just yet. I'm sorry about that. I'm guessing they're, they're rebooting them or, or uh, checking them out. These seats, though, <laughs> and I'm not having much success with that today. These seats, let me see if I can take us to full flat. I'm going to try to take mine to full flat so you can see what it looks like. Um, or near full flat. I don't think it's fully extended yet. I believe these are full flat, but we will find out. And, oh yeah, in fact, it does go for it. Pardon me, thank you. So to show you what, there. In fact, it is a full 81 foot flat, and I'm glad to see that. We'll take it back up again. Um, which is actually a really good feature. I remember American had a product that was a 170 degree product, which if you're gonna to go to 170, I don't know why you wouldn't go to 180. So again, uh, my seating recommendations, I think everything is good. Generally, you're going to want an AB side or um, other than the, those row four ones. But with that, I think it's getting crowded. We don't want to disturb people. So leave any questions and comments. Thanks so much. We're going to do a tour of United's 777 uh, Boeing 777-200 uh, ETOPS. Now, the story of uh, the 777 is actually kind of an interesting one, right? Because long-range aircraft for the longest time uh, were limited to four engines if you wanted to go um, over water for any period of time, meaning that thing the long-range aircraft of choice for the longest time was, in fact, the uh, Boeing 747 or the L-1011 or the DC-10. As Boeing was looking for uh, a candidate to um, fill in between the 747 and the shorter range, 767, they came up with what is the largest um, twin-engine jumbo to fly to the state. Now, in the late 80s, the ETOPS rules were loosened as engine technology improved, uh, and the birth of this 777 was born. Now, one of the things about the 777, and you'll notice this one is in fact ETOPS certified, uh, although we're only going to LA today, um, and it looks like they're catering on some good stuff, so that would be great. Um, but the interesting thing about the ETOPS certification is um, you know, airliners, as, as fuel costs increase, running a, a, a two-engine plane is a lot more economical and efficient. And so, um, Boeing launched this project in uh, late 89, and United, in fact, was uh, the inaugural customer. Now, um, a couple of things you can see here, um, you know, obviously we're fueling up. Uh, you'll notice the heavier duty uh, landing gear. Obviously, this is a big bird. Uh, it has three sets of two wheels on each side. Um, but the idea of being the inaugural customer, United actually took flight in 
delivery in the first commercial flight on June 7th, uh, 1995. Now, um, one of the other interesting things as they moved to the dual engine, which obviously paved way for uh, the 787 and other Airbus products, uh, was, you know, obviously it saved on fuel, it was more efficient. Um, and, you know, I think the engine technology of the 60s and 70s, when the regulations were first put there, this was really just a change in how the regulations work. Um, so really uh, good news for United. And uh, as I said, United was the first customer, uh, June 7th, uh, 1995. Uh, and here we are, 29 years later, um, and it's still the largest twin engine uh, jumbo flying. So this particular configuration we're going to be flying and we will show you a little bit later We'll do a cabin tour um, This is one of the more dense versions uh, intended for uh, Hawaii as well as transcons uh, So it is in first a two by four by two uh, So we'll have a video for that shortly But uh, anyway, just wanted to share a little bit of that We don't always get a great view of the planes from the outside like we do today. So wanted to give you a look and um, hope you're having a great one. Leave any questions or comments in here. And one of my questions for you is, what is your favorite jet to fly on, on United? Uh, I'll share my answer uh, a little bit later, but wanted to give you this tour for right now. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me see if I can get a longer shot. Um, let's see if we can get over here and get a full tail. Oh yeah, yeah that's nice. Um, I'm actually such a big plane, I don't know if we can get the whole thing in one pane without it being blocked. Um, but there you have it. So uh, if you're a plane enthusiast, uh, I, hope, I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I do. And uh, again, any questions or comments, I welcome it. We'll be having a cabin tour uh, very shortly. Thanks again.